Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at kinetic energy and physical states, water as a liquid, the specific heat capacity of water, latent heat of vaporization of water, and then we'll finish with a summary. So we need to understand the relationship between kinetic energy of molecules and the physical states that substances exist in. Any substance, whether that's a particular element or a molecule, can exist in either three main physical states. That can be a solid or a liquid or a gas. So a solid is where the particles, which we'll use particles as a vague term meaning atoms or molecules, the particles are very compact together in a tight space and they're stuck in a rigid position. So the solid doesn't flow or move. In a liquid, they're a bit more free. They're still attached to each other, but they're kind of moving around each other and sliding past one another so that it's a bit more flowing. And in a gas state, they have even more energy and freedom whereby they can move much more freely they're much more mobile and they can whiz around and the molecules are no longer attached to each other. So any substance that you have can exist in one of these three states. Whichever state the substance exists in depends on how much energy the particles have and this relates to how much the particles are moving because if a particle moves more, it's said to have more kinetic energy. So every single particle in that substance has a specific amount of energy and if it has more energy in the particle, then it's able to move more. If it has less, it moves less. So if things move more, they tend to be the state of liquids and gases because they're more free. And if they move less, they tend to be solids. The way to increase the kinetic energy of a particle is when the temperature is risen. So the temperature and kinetic energy kind of mean the same thing. The measurement of a temperature of a substance is how much the particles have in terms of kinetic energy. So at a lower temperature, each of those particles has a low amount of energy or kinetic energy specifically. This means that they're not moving very much. Even if this was a gas where they're moving freely, they may not be moving very, very fast. If we increase the temperature to a higher temperature, then these have now got a higher kinetic energy, which means that each particle with more energy will move further and will whiz around more independently. So this raises the kinetic energy. So temperature is kind of a measure of kinetic energy in the particles. And when the particles are given enough kinetic energy, they break the forces between them, so the forces of attraction between particles, and then they change their state. So if we go back to our solid, liquid and gas diagram, the state that they're in depends on the amount of kinetic energy each particle has. In a solid, each particle has not got very much kinetic energy. They're not moving very much and therefore they're not very free. If we increase the temperature, then the kinetic energy goes up. And so the particles have more energy, they're moving around more, and they're now not so fixed and rigid in their position. So they're starting to flow like a liquid does. And if we increase the temperature even more, the kinetic energy goes even higher, and then they become the state of a gas, where they're all whizzing around, they're barely attached to each other, and they're sort of free to move as much as possible. So the kinetic energy determines which state the particles exist in. And water as a liquid has specific properties that relate to this. So a lot of smaller molecules, like molecules of oxygen, which are only two oxygen atoms together, or molecules of carbon dioxide, which are written as CO2, they're small molecules and they tend to exist as gases at room temperature already. So we already said before that as we go from solid to liquid to gas, kinetic energy increases and the freedom of particles increases too. So if these molecules already exist as gases, they've already reached this high kinetic energy state, and it's enough for them to exist as a gas. The reason for this is because small molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide only have very weak attractions between their molecules. These are weak intermolecular forces. So for example, the attraction between one O2 molecule and another is very, very weak because they're so small. And we call it a weak intermolecular force because it's between the molecules. So in order to break these apart from each other and allow them to be independent, we only had to add a small amount of energy to break the intermolecular force and allow the molecules to exist as a gas. So even at room temperature, say about 25 degrees C, the energy that was needed to break apart the bond between the molecules, the intermolecular force, was already enough. And so they've gone from being a solid, where their particles are very rigid and fixed in place, to eventually a liquid and then a gas. So these oxygen molecules exist as a gas already because the energy is so low. Water is slightly different. You would think the same happens for water, but it's different due to its chemical structure. It's also a small molecule, but the problem is water is also described as a polar molecule. 
as opposed to oxygen and carbon dioxide which aren't. And so we've got these hydrogen bonds that form between the water molecules. So these are still intermolecular forces called hydrogen bonds, but they're much stronger. So they're still between molecules, but they're different to the usual. Hydrogen bonds are much stronger than the other intermolecular forces found, for example, between oxygen and carbon dioxide, and they need more energy to break them. So here we have two water molecules, and originally a hydrogen bond existed between them, one of those intermolecular forces. In the same way for oxygen and carbon dioxide, in order to go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, we have to increase the kinetic energy. But the energy needed to break these bonds is much more. So we need more heat added in and more energy to break these bonds. So because of this polar nature, and because of the strength of hydrogen bonds, water therefore has an unusually high boiling point for its size. And at room temperature, it exists as a liquid, not a gas. So oxygen exists as a gas, CO2 exists as a gas, because room temperature is enough to break those bonds between their molecules. But for H2O, or water, we've not just got any intermolecular force, we have hydrogen bonds, denoted by these green lines, and they're much stronger. So room temperature isn't enough to break them apart. So we have to increase the temperature even more to achieve boiling, where the liquid turns into a gas, and this happens at about 100 degrees C. So it's got an unusually high boiling point for its size, and at room temperature, which is what most organisms live at, it is in the state of a liquid. So this property of water, in that it exists as a liquid in these room temperatures, is very essential for life, as water can allow several things to happen. First of all, it can provide a habitat for aquatic organisms. So at room temperature, or most of the temperatures that fluctuate through the day, we have lakes or ponds, which can provide habitats, for example, fish. Water also provides a medium, because in liquid form, it provides this kind of environment where chemical reactions can occur. So we've got an environment of liquid water as a medium through which other things can occur. For example, enzymes can dissolve, and as well as this, reactants dissolve too. And because they're all dissolving, they can move freely and interact with each other, which means that reactions can happen much faster. If it existed as a gas, things would be too spread out and would never interact with each other. And obviously, if we had this as a solid, things would be fixed in place and they would never be able to meet. So liquid water is a very good medium for chemical reactions. And they also provide a medium for many transport systems too. For example, the blood system uses blood to transport oxygen and other things around the body. And as a medium, it's great because it can travel through tubes as a liquid and flow to various locations. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.